You join us for the 2008 Malaysian Grand Prix where you can see on the right the McLaren of Kimi Räikkönen on pole position, on the left the Toyota of Mark Webber, the five lights are on and the big pause before the five lights go out. Who's got in the way of best? Mark Webber got the marginally better start. We're having a look at Nico Hulkenberg, who qualified in a terrific seven from the BMW Sauber. He's got a Super Gary chasing in, but what's happening into the first corner? And it looks like Webber has taken the lead according to the timing. At the bottom, you can see the Toyota moving ahead of Raikkonen, but it's still battling on, and as you can see, the field going through safely through the first couple of corners. That is a Williams who has overtaken one of the McLarens. Good start from the Williams actually, they qualified down in 19th and 21st, and look at that contact between Raikkonen and Button going into turn 4, did they both get away with it, let's find out as we go through the next few corners, I think they have, and I think Kimi is still second, but it is Martin Webber who leads the race, having taken it from Raikkonen on the first lap. That's a Toro Rosso going backwards, that's Paul Di Resta, qualified higher than 18th at least anyway but has dropped down to 21st, so not a good start from the Toro Rosso, who showed pretty well in qualifying actually. Ricardo was up there, and look at this kerfuffle going into turn 9. Tight left hand hairpin, and they're all shuffling themselves into line, just trying to work out where to go. But there's your race leader, Mark Webber, who, who suffered quite a bad bit of fortune in Suzuka last time out. He was leaving the race quite comfortably, and then it appeared as if he'd made a mistake at the spoon curve, either going into it or... In, yeah, probably going into it, he probably had a bit of a spin on the first apex and made it as far as the barrier. There's sixth place Nico Hulkenberg, so he's gained the position at the start at the expense of Lewis Hamilton. And let's pick up the order, so let end of lap one, Matt Webber leads from Kimi Raikkonen and Jensen Button in third. Takuma Sato in fourth, he is another one who lost the win at Suzuka, having crashed out. Um, oh, was that Hulkenberg having a go at someone? Well, let's find out. So. He was having a go at the Ferrari of Timo Glock, who qualified very strongly up in fifth. Still in fifth, but he's got Nico Hulkenberg all over him. And I do happen to know that the BMW Saubers are running the hard tyres for Sepang. So seventh on the grid was a sterling effort from Hulkenberg. But it is worth bearing in mind that this is round four. We have the first round of tokens to be used. And that's a Force India having a look at one of the Super Aguris into turn number four. And yellow flags, so something has happened. I think there's been an incident, there's debris all over the track, so somebody's lost the front wing, it is the Super Aguri. both Super Aguris actually have lost their front wing, so terrible luck for the Japanese team, they're both going to have to pit, and that's going to cost them so much time, because sometimes we do see that once your Super Aguri, once the mechanics make a pit stop, they can go back into the garage without realising that the cars have double stacked, so that's an absolute disaster for both Massa and Alonso. And the marker buffer going into turn number nine. That's the Renault's taking a bite out of the rest of his rear end as we go through 10 and 11. It's Kubica who's ahead of DiResta, so it must be Barrichello in 21st place. It won't be last for long because both Super Gurus are due at some repairs. That's Sergio Perez we are looking at in 10th place. And I think Hulkenberg has just taken Glock for 5th place. So Hulkenberg up to 5th. And BMW Sauber have used some of their tokens to help upgrade their car, specifically in the engine department. So, Hulkenberg using that to great effect in qualifying and even better in the race. And Timo Glock has got a Red Bull alongside him going for the first couple of corners. It's Sebastian Vettel who's overtaken Lewis Hamilton somewhere. So, Sebastian Vettel is on the move. Hamilton dropping back down the order for a bit, it seems. And we've got more yellow flags out, so some, someone else has had instances onto the curb because Timo Glock under pressure from Vettel. <coughs> and Vettel moves up into 6th place as a result. There's Montoya in 12th place, didn't qualify at all well in, the, in his BMW Sauber, but he's kept out of trouble so far. And at the moment he's in 12th place behind Heifeld. He's stormed his way through the order on the opening lap, so great start from the Williams. And both Williams did not qualify well, now in 19th and 21st on the grid. Just the Renaults for company. <coughs> so rounding the turn 14 corner goes Jensen Button chasing Kimi Raikkonen. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And he's chasing him for second place in the race. McLarens are on the medium tyres, so it's helped. it benefited Raikkonen in, in qualifying and taken pole position by about a quarter of a second, but in the race, 
Not quite as much of a gain, but it's not humbling Kobayashi too much. He's challenging Montoya for 12th, going into the final corner. And up the inside, and into 12th place goes the Japanese driver. Score points at his home race. This is Luke in 8th place. His teammate did finish 2nd, so that was a good result for McLaren. And they've jumped up to 2nd in the championships. Both of them, because Reichman is 2nd in the drivers. Just 20 points behind Jensen Button, who won last time out at Suzuki. Probably should have mentioned that first, the results of the last race. So a button from Viking and from Nick Heifel, who had a tremendous drive in the Williams to go from somewhere in the midfield up to third place in the race. No doubt aided by the instance of Takuma Sato and Mark Webber. Off the track goes Lewis Hamilton. And which corner was that? Was the exit of turn six? Let's see. That's the double right at 7 and 8. So yeah, Hamilton making a bit of a mistake at the exit of turn 6. And that's helped block upper position. So the German in the Ferrari up to 8. The block is one of the four drivers not to score points this season. The other three being Alonso, amazingly enough. And Alonso himself, he retired on the very last chicane on the very last lap because of a transmission failure. With a downhill slope, he could, could have easily made it to, across the line, but he chose to pull off. For whatever reason, but to each their own. Alonso is one driver yet to score, and the other drivers yet to score, they are Paul De Resta, and there's another driver as well. Not 100% sure at this stage, could be Nico Hulkenberg. I think it is Nico Hulkenberg, yeah. So those are the four drivers yet to score points this season. At the moment, Hulkenberg doing a great job up in fifth place. How far is he behind Sato? Oh, he's actually a bit wide at turn one. So he's lost a bit of time. He was 3.1 seconds behind the Honda driver. Uh, he'll be a bit further back with that little error at turn one. And what is the gap in there? Third sector point comes at the exit of turn four, or approach to turn five, rather. And Oldenburg lost 1.4 seconds in that one sector with that little mistake. And 3.8 seconds is the gap between Weber and Reichman at the front, so Weber pulling away quite alarmingly. Wouldn't at all surprise me if the... Oh, that's a bit wide for Montoya. Way too wide onto the gravel. Somehow manages to hold it and only loses one place to the False India. And the False India is Christian Alves. <coughs> now Montoya's coming under pressure from one of the Renaults. It's Kibitza. Or is it Barrichello? Actually, Barrichello somehow made his way past Kibitza and the Toro Rossi. So Rubens... Not doing too badly, the bits of seemingly a poor pace or a very high fuel load. We did see uh, last time out and Mark Webber sets the fastest lap. So let's see uh, Timo Glock versus Lewis Hamilton. At the inside is the final corner and up a position retaking that place from Timo Glock is Lewis Hamilton, who crashed out last time out at Suzuka and then caused a bit of a bit of a bit of a debris sprawling moment and was collected by Rubens Barrichello. Who we are looking at, which has been passed by Paul De Resta for 15th place. So through the best of turns 5 and 6 goes Mark Webber, the race leader, by over 4 seconds now, as Montoya is now under pressure from Paul De Resta going into the first corner. And the two Renaults, for that matter, have a smoke coming out of the tyre of De Resta. That's given Montoya a bit of breathing space now. As he approaches turn number four on his sixth lap. <coughs> and now into the fastest. So he's 4.5 seconds behind Christian Alves. And no doubt a lot of that will have been thanks to the mistake at that very corner there. As he goes into turns seven and eight, we switch to Mark Webber, who is exiting turn 14. And he's got a big gap over Kimi Raikkonen, looking quite comfortable in the lead. Two Renaults about to come into combat, come to turn around, and the Williams of Bianchi behind, and Matthias Lauda. Now he's had a bad start, because he's behind all this lot. I uh, don't think it was damage, it could have been an incident involving another driver. Still don't really know what happened with these Super Guris, I might have to look at that one back. The gap is 4.8 seconds between Mark Webber and Kimi Raikkonen. First and second, Jensen Button still close behind. Just half a second behind Kimi Raikkonen. Looks like he's going to try and look for second place in the next few laps. 
speaker moves to Renault's into the final corner. Kibitza versus Barrichel. And Kibitza retakes that place off of little Rubens. Rubinho. One of the nicest characters in F1. Looks a bit like Kelsey Grammer as well. Here's another headshot of him. He's got a head box, so he's going into the first corner. And he's taking a very middle line. I wonder if he's trying to have a go back at his team yet. Turn three, well, he's in turn three, and now he exits it. Right, so there's Matthias Lauber in 19th place, and the two Super Gurries are behind him, and there's probably another driver behind as well. We pitted for pitted thanks to some damage. So I think three cars headed for the pits at the exit of lap two to repair some damage. We did see the Super Gurries. There's another driver as well, and I can't quite see who that was, who that is at the moment. Certainly not on the top 11 anyway, which consists of Mark Webber. Look, let's have a look at De Vesta. Oh, oh, 14th place. I'll be interested to see who's in 12th and 13th, because that might give us a clue as to who's the third driver who was forced into the pits to repair some damage. But in fact, there is a Super Gurry of Massa, and he's nearly a lap down on Mark Webber. So I think the front Super Gurry was Fernando Alonso. He obviously got serviced first, and then... Once the mechanics were done, they forgot about Felipe Massa. Poor old Felipe. And that's why he's nearly a lap down on Webber already. And there's going to be contact if these two drivers are not careful. It's Montoya and De Resta. <coughs> and what's the gap between Webber and Reichen? It's 5.4. It's going to increase a little bit. 5.7 as they go through the first sector. As around the outside, attempting to on Montoya goes Paul De Resta. If he's not careful, he'll lose a place to the Renault of Robert Kubica. As we go on board with Kimi Raikkonen, and Jensen got was right behind him. It was just two tenths of a second as they went through the first sector point. So the Toyota is obviously the quicker car at this stage. That's Sergio Perez, who has got Nick Heidfeld right behind him. Who's behind Heidfeld? It's Kamui Kobayashi. Heidfeld has slowed up a little bit. Uh, Kobayashi chose the wrong line in there. So here's Kobayashi in 12th. So who is in 13th place? Because that will give us a clue as to where, as to who might have put it. So inside of Montoya into turn 9 he goes Kubica contact between the two. And Kubica's got ahead of Duresta somewhere on this lap as well. So maybe Duresta's had a go at Kubica, uh, has had a go at Montoya, and has lost out to the Renault. So a bit of opportunity in the seams for Robert Kubica. And looking at the front, Button's taking second place off of Kimi Raikkonen. I think it's just happened going into the first few corners, but has Raikkonen got back ahead? He has, and Sato's taken third as well. There it is, the action side by side. Button's had a go, but he's locked. He's lost third place as a result. Now inside of Montoya goes Kubica into the final corner, so that's a position gain for the Renault. 13th place is Christian Albers, so I wonder if it's Daniel Ricciardo who had to make a pit stop for some, for some repairs on his bodywork, because he qualified very strongly with Ricciardo up in 11th, but as it seems he's not even in the top lot, so yeah, I think the two Super Gurus and Ricciardo have had to make pit stops unscheduled, so that, for Ricciardo that's particularly unfortunate, because the Toro Rosso haven't been particularly quick in the opening three races. Maybe they've used quite a few of their tokens to help upgrade their car after Suzuka. Would make sense, but who knows. I can actually reveal that McLaren haven't used any tokens as of yet, and so far it's not doing them too much harm because Kimi Raikkonen's in second, and Kirby Ash is in tenth. Something has happened, someone has dropped a bunch of positions because they've seen Perez, Kirby Ash, and Andrew get ahead. So, who has made a mistake? Let's see. So, Barrichello 16th, ahead of him is. Well, it's, it's Montoya, and then it's Kubica. So, 13th position. Hmm. Who has made a mistake? Is it, in, is it Sebastian Vettel? No, it's, is it in 6th place? I think it's Timo Glock. I think so much has happened to Timo Glock because he's got the out of the top 11 now. But anyway, so here's Paul De Resta going through the final corner. And has he got Rubens Barrichello right in front of him? I think he has because the gap is quite small. Well, it's now gone up to 1.3 seconds. So 
all the rest are dropping back a bit in this early stage. In fact, he's got Gilles Bianchi coming alongside him into the first corner and still there, Gilles Bianchi taking a position off of all the rest. <coughs> now he's switched back to the back of the second between Kimi Raikkonen in the McLaren BMW, Takuma Sato in the Honda, and then at war with Honda is Toyota, and in fourth place, oh, big spin for Montoya! Big spin for Montoya, and whereabouts has he spun off? Trying to work out what corner that is. Is that the first corner, first corner, or fifth corner? Who knows? Well, there's an overhead shot, and there's a pretty good shot of him spinning. There was a bit of tarmac on the outside. I might have been turned four. But we now focus back onto the battle for second. That's, that's the middle of the three, and it's taking us out. Of. And that weather sets a new fastest lap, a 132.1. And pulling away... He's still pulling away from Kimi Raikkonen. And there's the recovering Montoya, having spun off somewhere. Probably at turn four, I think, and now he's behind De Resta and Lauda. 12, 13, and now into 14. Tricky braking zone, and means the front and right tends to lock up if you're going there a bit too quick. The unloaded front right tyre. And through the back straight, back to Sato and buttons closer to Sato on this particular lap so looks as if Jensen could be making a move back up to third place in the next few laps. At the moment we now look at Sergio Perez in ninth place behind Lewis Hamilton and ahead of Kamui Kobayashi, a Japanese driver, teammate to Reitman in the McLaren BMW. <coughs> Through the fast stuff and into the double right of eight, seven, and eight. Now we switch back into the final sector. And so the right now going through turn twelve. Now the curved right of thirteen before you break into fourteen and onto the back straight where one of the few overtaking opportunities can occur in this circuit. There's four places you can overtake in this circuit. Here is one of them going into the final hairpin. And then out of the final hairpin, and another new fastest lap for Weber. A 132.0 as he goes into the first corner. That's another overtaking spot. And then once we exit turn one, two, and then this curving sweeper turn three, here comes another overtaking opportunity. Although for Weber, that's none of his concern because he's got such a big lead. And Sutil's into the pits very early in lap 11, and his first of probably three stops by the looks of it, because it's only on. That was at the end of lap 11 for Adrian. Winner of the Oceanian Grand Prix, and he did not too badly at Suzuka right as well. He got some points, nearly a fastest lap, but that was pinched at the end by Mark Weber, who I think was probably a bit angry after losing the race win. And he had new times as well. Into turn four goes Sergio Perez, now to eighth place with the pit stop of Adrian Sutil, and through the sweepers of five and six. The green works quite well on this helmet. It's a nice little contrast to the red Ferrari. So Sebastian Vettel is now caught up to Nico Hulkenberg for fifth place. Hulkenberg doing well, but he certainly can't keep up with the top four. He's some seven odd seconds behind Jensen Button in fourth place. But Sebastian Vettel is just three tenths behind the German in the German BMW Sauber team. Part run by a Swissman. And another new fastest lap for Weber. Now into the 31s, as up the inside into the final hairpin goes Sebastian Vettel. And oh my goodness me, there's contact between the two just about. Now, if punctures existed, Hulkenberg would have definitely had one. But punctures seem to be attributed to reliability problems. And now up the inside goes Sebastian Vettel into the first corner. And that's fifth place for the impressive Red Bull driver. Although he did crash out last time out at Suzuka, and he was shunted off in Oceania. And then in the first race, he got a fifth place. The double rights. That's race leader Mark Webber. And he's eight and a half seconds now ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. If things go to plan for Webber, and so far this season they haven't really, then we could be looking at another race win. His first of the season, it would be his first... Oh, off the track, is that Vettel off? It is Vettel off, so having just taken fifth place, he's now thrown that away. 
Back up to fifth goes the BMW Sauber of Nico Hulkenberg. And looking at the background, that's Lewis Hamilton, not too far behind either. So both Red Bulls doing quite well as they're both in the top seven, but it'd rather be fifth and seventh rather than sixth and seventh. As we now look at Christian Alves going into turn nine. A tight hairpin, one of the less overtaking opportunities, but it's still possible if you're, if you're doing quite well alongside. And once again, Mark Webber sets the fastest lap. He's enjoying himself at the front. And he ought to. He's only had a second place and a bit of a minor point score at Suzuki. Onto the back straight, but now we switch to the front straight into turn one. And now back to the back straight, because Timo Glock is under pressure from Robert Kubica, who's shown some pretty good race pace. He's pulled away a lot from the field that was tucked up behind Montoya earlier on. And now the bits of lucky to challenge Team Ugly. 12th place. And that's Gilles Bianchi versus a Toro Rosso Paul Di Resta in the final call. Di Resta up to 15th place. <coughs> Kenny Wright coming back to go into the fast double right. You can see a nice view of the grandstand. Very groundbreaking grandstand as. Webber has better once again at getting it a bit too wide at the fast stuff, but he's held on held onto that so far. Now he's dropping back from Nico Hulkenberg and now he's becoming under pressure from Lewis Hamilton for sixth place. Hamilton nowhere near close enough, but he's he's building it, I think. Hamilton winner of the Chinese Grand Prix last season, thanks to an ingenious strategy from the Super Bowl team. This season it's been less successful for Lewis. Always had his own eighth place in Oceania, which itself was inherited after Gilles Bianchi crashed out from fifth place in the closing stages. Although Bianchi still was classified ninth, had completed more than ninth percent. And curiously, Matthias Lava crashed out pretty much at half distance in that race, but was still awarded a point for ten. In this particular series, if you're in the top ten, no matter what happens, you do get points. And Sato looking a lot closer now to Kimi Raikkonen. And maybe he looks as if he's going to challenge for second place. Raikkonen defending a bit, but Sato right up the inside now into turn four. And Raikkonen hold on. Yes, he can. Holding on just about to second place. Quite a grim defence, but it's worked out so far. Now he's just ten seconds behind Mark Webber. And the squabble losing them a lot of time compared to the race leader. That's Kubica making his way past Sergio Perez. As Kimi Reifer. Which corner is this? That's Swoop. Tire Swoop. I wonder if there's been another go between one of these three. That's through turn 11. Now into turn 12. That is a super go. That is a lap down, pretty much. Already a lap down on Weber, and we'll throw a lap down soon on this. So, that is a bit of taking block actually, because we're looking at Sergio Perez in 8th place with Kobayashi right behind him. Kobayashi in 9th. And on those medium tyres, which aren't doing too badly. That's Adrian Sutto having made that very early pit stop. He's right in the traffic. He's right behind Matthias Lauda. So this strategy doesn't look as if it's going to work out at all now for Sato, unless he makes a demon race. That's Sato up the inside of Raikkonen, but now he's switched back to Kobayashi, who's having a go at Sergio Perez into the final hairpin. That is a position gained for uh, Kamui Kobayashi. So while one McLaren's on his move, the other one has lost second place to Takuma Sato. There it is. And now Raikkonen versus Jensen Button, maybe into the turn number four. Have a look at Jensen and he forces his way past Raikkonen and up into third place goes the Brit. Two time race winner this season at Melbourne and at Suzuka. Now Jensen's going to chase after Takuma Sato, but Weber is long gone. That's 11 seconds the lead between Weber and Sato. <coughs> as Timo Glock goes through turn three, onto a small straight before turn four. And Kibitz has just disappeared. So Timo Glock has not got good race pace at all, it seems. Let's be wonder if they went for these soft tyres with the Ferrari because Glock did start fifth, but now he's way down in 13th place. Sergio Perez now in 9th place behind Kamui Kobayashi. So 
to there is Timo about to turn into turn nine. And it's another new fastest lap for Mark Webber into the 31.7s now. as if whatever fuel load that the uh, Toyota Weber is running seems as if it's working quite well and probably two stopping as are most of the field but Sutil with that early stop could be three stopping as into turn four goes the race leader Mark Weber. and whereabouts is he in the championship because he's not had a good one so far Tape at the end of this lap he's fourth in the championship he's got 26 points Teammate Jensen's got 50 points, so Toyota have got 76 points in their championship battle so far. <laughs> Somewhere ahead of McLaren, and we're seeing pit stops now as well. Kibitza was making a pit stop as we look at Takuma Sato in that wide rear wheel base. On the about to lap the Super of Felipe Massa. Turn number 11. Now into the turn 12. And we have a moment as you turn left and then sweep right before you break into a tricky turn 14. Multiple lines can be taken going into that corner. So it depends which one I prefer. But into the pits comes Mark Webber from the race lead. Built up quite a big lead over Takuma Sato. Now he needs to rejoin in some rough clear air as spin goes. Rubens Barrichello is onto the racing line. Better be careful because, oh Jesus, that is close. I think Ruben, they're all going to get away with it. Just about as Rubens Barrichello's spin turns it 180. Pretty much into the path of Daniel Ricciardo. And that is, that's not going to do his first one. So, Jimmy Reitman in second place. Turning into turn two. So, so, second place behind Jensen Putton because Weather Sato are uh, both in the pits. And Heifel into the pits, and uh, it's Bethel into the pits actually, from wherever he was before sixth, I think. So it's now Jensen Button leading the race, but pit stops are underway. As we look at Fernando Alonso versus Montoya going into the final corner, Montoya really not having a good race at all. Because having made his pit stop for a new front wing, Fernando Alonso has caught up to the Colombian driver. So he needs to get his pet up a little bit, does Montoya in the next few races, as out of the pits comes Vettel, ahead of these two. So, Alonso on the outside of Montoya, and side by side through the first corner. I think Montoya may well have just held it because he had the inside line at turn at one. He has done, so Montoya maintains 16th place at the moment, but Alonso does seem to have the much quicker car at this stage. Goes Montoya and now into the fast at five and six. Brief look at the long shot before switching back to focus on Montoya. Now is Alonso gonna he's gonna have a look going into there, but nothing making that one work. So Hulkenberg is in third place now. As we switch back to the turns seven and eight shot, that's Daniel Ricciardo ahead of Rubens Barrichello. Breaking into turn nine. Third place, Nico Hulkenberg goes into turn one. And 9.5 seconds behind the right in at this stage. 2.4 seconds ahead of Lewis Hamilton in fifth place. Kobayashi fifth at the moment. Weber is 1.4 seconds behind the Japanese driver. So, fairly clear, clear track, but We'll catch up to Kobayashi soon as up the inside and taking a position off of Montoya goes the Super Aguri of Fernando Alonso. As going into turn 9 goes Kimi Raikkonen. On lap 19 now. Two point six seconds is the gap between Button and Raikkonen as we go through the second sector point. Still at two point six seconds, so. The gap remaining fairly static at this stage. The Jensen Button is now going to try and put a lap on Felipe Massa going into the final corner. Massa in 22nd and the last place. All 22 cars are still running at this stage. As onto the start finish straight goes Felipe Massa looking at the rearward shot. And it's not made it easy for Jensen Button having to force his way up the inside. 
and that will help Kimi Raikkonen in a little bit. In fact, Massa's just retaken Jensen, so Massa really not playing ball at all. Kobayashi into the pits from fifth place, and that will ease Mark Webber's way back up towards the front. Australian now back up to fifth place, he's some seven seconds behind Lewis Hamilton at this stage of the race. They had an 11 second lead over Jensen Button, Takuma Sato, and Kimi Raikkonen, so once the pit stops are made, I would expect Webber to regain the lead. <coughs> So Kobayashi making his pit stop and the target well, four points are possible for Kobayashi he's been driving very well in this race so far and Massa re-taking that lap back from Button has lost Jensen a second to Kimi Raikkonen so be interesting to see if Jensen or Kimi which of those two will pick first because if Jensen's having to pick first out of these two then that will definitely hinder the Toyota driver as Tony will run. 21st place for the Bixer who has made a pit stop. So he will move his way back up the order when the rest of the drivers make their first stops. But it is Kimi who pits first. So that will that will that will ease Jensen's nerves a little bit because the low fuel he can use that to his advantage to pull a bit of a gap. As across the line for another lap goes Nico Hulkenberg, he'll be up to second place at this point. This has been a tremendous drive from Hulkenberg, seven from the grid on the hard tyres, which are better for the race. And he had quite a bit of fuel on board as well, so definitely the drive of the day so far is Nico Hulkenberg. Although Mark Webber's domination at the front does come quite close. Briefly moving up into third place is Lewis Hamilton. And now Mark Webber, your effective race leader, back up to fourth. The target for Kimi Raikkonen is to get out ahead of Takuma Sato, but he hasn't managed it. Only just though, so Kimi is still in in touch, but Sato taking effectively what will effectively be third place once Jensen and expecting him to get the jump on the Honda driver. So Alonso versus Vettel, this is going into turn number four. Or turn number one actually. Now for turn two. Kobayashi right behind the Red Bull driver as the back straight goes Jensen Button, race leader. Is he going to turn into the final hairpin? He's going to turn into the pit, so one lap extra off fuel compared to Kimi Raikkonen. That is what Jensen Button had as turning into turn nine goes to no block. Keep an eye on the timing screens to see where Jensen rejoins in relation to Takuma Sato and Kimi Raikkonen. They're quite close together. And also keep an eye on the timing screen to see if the BMW Sauber takes the lead. It has to. Nico Hulkenberg briefly leads the race before he has to make his first pit stop. And Lewis Hamilton temporarily moves up into second place. And Mark Webber goes up to third. Remember the top two have got their first stops to make. So considering the start of the season they've had, it's been a... That'll, that'll do BMW Sauber's confidence quite a lot. Good to see Nico Hulkenberg in the lead. And Jensen Button pulling off! Jensen Button pulling off! Straight after his pit stop, and it looks as if he's out of the race. Well, now is that going to be a loose wheel, or is that going to be a completely different issue? Because, well, that was immediate. Pretty much immediate after the first corner. So, at first retirement of the race is Jensen Button in exactly the same place as Takuma Sato last season. Suspension failure, that is that is curious, so uh, makes me wonder if the drive shaft has gone and then it's done some damage to the suspension, but it will come up transmission, so that's an unusual failure for, for the Toyota to have. So that will effectively put Takuma Sato up into second and Kimi Raikkonen at third once the first pit stops are done. So of course we've got we've still got a long way to go, 34 laps. 34 and a bit laps, and this is weather on the back straight. I think it was because here is second place Lewis Hamilton on the main straight, going for another lap, as is Nico Hulkenberg. And keeping out in the background, I think Mark Webber has got Sergio Perez quite close to him, but both Ferraris, Perez 4th and Block 7th, have got pit stops to make.
Yeah, just to go back to BMW Sauber, they currently sit last in the championship. And they don't have a particularly good season last time out as well, with ninth in the championship, despite a podium for Heidfeld at Monaco. And the start of the season's not been great for BMW Sauber, with just uh, just six points on the board. That was courtesy of Montoya, taking seventh at Adelaide, despite struggling quite a bit on the wet track. Speaking of which, there he is in 13th place, and he's got a Toro Rosso making contact with him going through the first corner. It's Daniel Ricciardo, no doubt trying to do what he can to recover after making the pit stop after the second lap to repair some damage after what looked like quite a major kerfuffle at turn four. Now he's up the inside at turn four, not quite making that one stick. Montoya holding on to 13th place, just about. But for BMW Sauber, if they get a good result with Nico Hulkenberg, and he's got a fourth place on the cards as Hamilton comes into the pitch from second place, so Hulkenberg's staying out for yet another lap. So Mark Webber will move into second as a Renault, nearly making contact with the Toro Rosso Ricardo. And Perez into the pits as well, so Mark Webber back up to second, and third place, it could be Christian Albers at the moment. We've got Hamilton as the picks and Sergio Perez. That's Timo Glock actually making a lockup going into the final corner. He's got Takuma Sato in front of him. There is the Japanese driver, but more immediately he has got Kumui Kobayashi behind the corner. And where are these two? They are. Where are they? They are fifth and sixth. That's Kimi Raikkonen actually behind Timo Glock. Fifth and sixth. I think Glock has got a pit stop to make. So. Heidfeld and Hamilton and Perez have made their pit stops. Perez is in 10th place now, so still in the points, and he's got the jump on Kobayashi. Hamilton, meanwhile, he's behind Sutter, so despite the early pit stops, Sutter has made his way back at the order, but if he is three stopping, then its strategy is not going to work because you lose quite a lot of time. So Ricardo versus Montoya once again into turn four. Now switch to the other false India of Christian Albers. On quite a long run, as finally into the pits for his first stop goes Nico Hulkenberg. So a good hearty stint for the BMW Sauber driver. Leading for a few laps. This will put Matt Webber back into the lead of the race as Ricardo versus Montoya. That, that's going to end in tears. Alonso versus Jules Bianchi going through turn number five. Now through turn six. So Christian Albers has temporarily moved up to second place. There he is, going through the first corner. So he's gone very, very long. The exact opposite strategy for Eugene Sutil, it seems. Now he's not done too bad. So he can go dropping down the order a bit. He's down to sixth for the moment. And he's trying to make a move around the outside, going into that turn nine, or is it the final corner? Have a look. That's the final corner because you can see good hatchings. So again, Montoya versus Ricardo. That is a that is a battle. And Oakenberg's rejoins seventh behind the probably three stopping Adrian Sutil. But he's ahead of Hamilton. That's the important one for him. So I should expect Oakenberg to move back up into fifth place, maybe fourth place actually, because Jensen Button is out for this. Ricardo's got Montoya, finally. And now for turn four, Montoya versus the Renault and Rubens Barrichello, who's got back ahead of Robert Kubitsi, interestingly. So something's gone a bit wrong with Kubitsi's race. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's Takuma Sata. Now we switch back to Alonso versus Bianchi to turn four. Nearly contact between the two, but not this time. Into the pits comes Christian Albers. So that'll move to Kun Sato back up into second place. There's the Japanese driver next to the final corner. And we might see Timo Glock in as well. Not this lap, it seems. Sato second, Glock fourth, Reichman fourth, Sutil fifth. Hulkenberg will move up into sixth place. And then Lewis Hamilton up to seventh. 
And then Matthias Lauer, he's, he's made his way up the order, but he's got a pit stop to move. He might be one stopping actually, Mike Lauer, if he's up into 8th place at this stage. So he's he's in 9th place. And then Kobayashi up into 10th. Into the pit stop of Christian Albers. Rubens Barrichello's into the pit, so he's actually gone very long compared to Kvitz. So that's why we saw him challenging Montoya quite vigorously. Much less fuel than the Colombian. And again, the Colombian struggles could be such that he has, still has to make a pit stop in the world. And what is the lead between Red and Sartre? So it's quite enormous. 16 and a half seconds, 17.2 seconds. Matt Weber is dominating this race as he goes into the final corner and about to start another lap, lap 27 this will be and Alonso still trying to get past Gil Bianchi trying it into turn 4 now he's switched to Heidfeld, he's ahead of Paul de Resta and spinning out of shot goes Heidfeld in the middle of the circuit but he'll rejoin fairly quickly and without too much issues but Williams not having a good race it seems, not having a good weekend actually Qualified down the order. And in terms of their race pace, it's not working to plan that either. That's Sato ahead of the Super Guri, who is a lap down. It's Felipe Massa. As locking up into turn 11 goes Gil Bianchi. And once again, he'll become under pressure from the Super Guri of Fernando Alonso. <coughs> As for the final. Penultimate corner, and the back straight, long back straight. Interesting to see how the on the approach to turn 15, the outside of the track goes outwards a bit. I'm trying to invite you to take another another line through there. That's a bit slow, like by the looks of it, for Heifeld. Could be just an innocuous brake lockup going into turn 15, compromising his line. And I think Alonso has taken Bianchi at last. So through the first corner goes the Williams of Heinfeld, Perlman finishing at Suzuka. Now we switch to the block, and there's Reichman and Suttles quite close behind Kimi Reichman at this stage. I imagine on that three-stop strategy, we'll be into the pits in the next few laps. So through turn four goes Alonso, who is now in 17th place, sandwiched by the two Williams. As who's into the pits? That's no, it is in fact Suttle has just taken Kimi Raikkonen for fourth place. So Adrian Suttle's on the move, and now his next target is that driver there. Compatriot, to move Lock into the first corner because Lock, you know, here you can see, I think that is Felipe Massa in front. And meanwhile, the gap is still building between Webber and Sato, 17 and a half seconds. Three turn three. There's your new fifth place driver, Kimi Raikkonen. And just behind is Nico Hulkenberg in sixth place. Hamilton not far behind. He's 1.5 seconds behind the German. Who's looking for his first points of the season. So that's through the fast block. Sutu. And off the track goes Massa. And he'll delay Glock a little bit. And they'll get out of the way. That's good, that's good awareness from the Brazilian. Super Gary's race is a bit of a write-off after the second lap. The instant to turn four. So through the final sector, there's Felipe Massa. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of him, I think, for a bit. Now we switch to the driver right in front of him, to the block. Number 17 on the Ferrari, which is quite an unusual number for the advancing horse to have. German is about to go into the final corner. And he's going to start another lap. So that is a one stop strategy for Block. That would explain why he drops down quite a bit in the opening segment of the race. Now we are past half distance and he hasn't made a pit stop. That'll be why a one stop strategy. So we are seeing a bit of a mixture between some drivers and teams. Most are favouring the two stops. Uh, Suttil probably three stopping and Glock looks as if he is one stopping so there is a bit of variety not too much but a little bit there is Adrian going to turn four now he's switched to the Williams of Gil Bianchi smoking both his front tyres his front right more than his front left 
but it's a bit unusual to lock your left front going into that particular corner. He's got a Renault behind him now, and behind the Renault is a Toro Rosso. <coughs> Let's try and work out which one that is as we go through the final corner. Could be Rubens Barrichello because there's Kubica. Is that a bit of smoke coming out of the Renault? I think it is. Kubica's got an engine problem. Now where is he on the circuit? Well, he's pulling off now. And, well, doing a neat little 180 somewhere. So Kubica becomes, I think, the second retirement of the afternoon. Jensen Button was the first one with a suspension flurry. And Kubica, well, quite brave to see the smoke coming out of the back of the car. Something has gone wrong with his Renault. Confirmation, Kubica out of the race with an engine failure. So, coming down the back stretch, that is Sergio Perez we are looking at. And Kubica, that's being pulled back at turn four, I think that is. And it's a bit bumpy over the grass. And then just making sure that his car is properly out of the way before the crane is off. 18.5 seconds. That is the lead gap between Matt Webber and Takuma Sato. Glock's still hanging on there in third, but Sutil is closing up to him. And that will be making a move anytime soon as Montoya goes through the first corner. Out of the first corner, into the second corner, and he hits the apex quite well. I think Montoya settled down a little bit now, he's in 13th place, his teammates up in 6th, and what are the other drivers? So, Glock and Sutu are probably going to be making a pit stop soon, as riding onto the kerb goes Montoya. And through the final call goes the race leader, the Toyota of Mark Webber. <coughs> Let's see if there's any other potential battles developing, but it looks as if the main battle at the moment is now for third place between Glock and Sutil. Less than half a second as they pass their last sector point as missing the apex by quite a bit of Sergio Perez. I think I think he thought he was in Singapore rather than Malaysia. Sutil into the pits for his second pit stop. So Team of Glock hasn't made a single pit stop yet and Sutil's had to make two. So, how big is that fuel tank on that Ferrari? And back at the fourth goes Kimi Raikkonen. And how big is the gap between Glock and Raikkonen? Keep an eye on the timing, timing bar and to see what the gap is between the two as they cross their first sector point. We have a look at Gio Bianchi in 17th place. In front of him is his own teammate, Nick Heidfeld. Maybe the name sit in the championship actually because they had a good race last time out at Suzuki with the third and fourth for both drivers. Great result for them. Let's have a look at Bianchi under pressure from Barrichello into the final corner. Not quite making that move work, but Barrichello looks as if he has got the faster car at this stage. Yeah, Williams sit fourth in the Constructors' Championship at the moment with Force India third. McLaren second and Toyota first. Up the inside of Bianchi goes Barry Keller and trying to get to the inside as quickly as possible so that Bianchi can't undercut him. Honda are fifth in the Constructors' Championship. <coughs> Sato's second place will surely do them quite a bit of good. And they are only three points behind Williams, so that will do, that'll do their race quite a bit of good. And they're only 11 points behind Force India at this stage. So if Sato stays there with Williams and Force India floundering a little bit, then the Honda will move back up to third in the Constructors' Championship. But there's still quite a bit of a race to go. About 24 and a bit laps. Renault sits sixth in the Constructors' Championship. And that will be no doubt thanks to Kubica's second place at Adelaide. Then you've got Super Aguri and Red Bull, 7th and 8th. Ferrari 9th, Toro Rosso 10th and BMW Sauber 11th in the Constructors' Championship. So as for the drivers, Jensen Button really got the scoring any points, so that will give Kimi Raikkonen, who is in second at the moment, a good opportunity to 
close that gap quite a bit. And then who have we got in third? Adrian Sutter in the Drivers' Championship. He's not having a great race at the moment thanks to his three-stop strategy. So it looks as if Mark Webber is going to be the main beneficiary of that because he sits fourth in the Drivers' Championship, just one point behind Sutter. And as he's got a massive race in the lead, then at 20 seconds now he's broken into the 20s in terms of his race lead over to Kim Sartre. Yeah, race win would probably move Matt Webber back into the lead, of, into second in the... No, it would actually move him ahead of Jensen Button. So, hmm. Okay, well, that would be an interesting one. Sato sits fifth in the Drivers' Championship ahead of Robert Kubica. Then you've got Nick Heifeld and Kamui Kobayashi, 7th and 8th. Not a bad effort, actually, from Kobayashi, who's scored points in the past two races. <coughs> That's including a good result in his home race. 9th and 10th are Felipe Massa and Joe Bianchi. Then you've got Albers, Perez, Ricardo Vettel, Lauda Montoya, Hamilton, Barrichello, and then four drivers yet to score points, Alonso, Block, Hulkenberg and De Resta. That's a brief recap of the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship at this stage. But of course, we've still got this race to complete, and then it'll all jumble itself up thanks to where the drivers are at the moment. A uh, key one as Bianchi locks up again, he's struggling with his tyres at this stage. But at the key moment in this race, Jensen Button pulling out of what is probably a potential second, because he's just taken that from Sato before making his pit stop. And making his first and only pit stop finally is Timo Glock. So that will move Kimi Reichman up to third place. And then it should move, we could move Nico Hulkenberg up to fourth place. Not bad. It does indeed. Hamilton up to fifth now. And Matthias Lauda, also probably one stopping, moves his way up into sixth place. So he's doing Honda's Constructors Championship bid, quite a bit of good, with both Hondas now up into the top six. Perez seventh, Kobayashi eighth, Albers ninth, and then tenth is Sebastian Vettel. And it's a, quite a lot of understanding. Oh, Kobayashi! His engine has gone. So that is one McLaren out of the race. That's the first mechanical retirement of the season. Although Kobayashi did have that bizarre moment in Melbourne where he looked as if he was retiring from the race, ripped a wheel off, but he trundled his way back into the pits and managed to rejoin the race somehow. So extraordinary stuff there. But there it is, a mechanical retirement for McLaren at BMW, the first of the season. Raikkonen has had a retirement in Adelaide, and that was a crash. Not what he needed after a pole position. And he started pole position in this race as well. The other two pole positions, Melbourne and Suzuka, both occupied by the Honda of Takuma Sato. And although they lead both championships, Toyota have yet to take a pole position in this, in this season. As we watch Kirby Ashley being turned away. As Mark Webber goes to turn number four. And the gap now up to 21.4 seconds. And Louder finally into the pits on lap 35. His only stop of the race. Like the Timo Glock. So that's going to move Christian Albers up into seventh place. And it will move Sebastian Vettel up into eighth. And it could move Sutto up to ninth. And Montoya could be into the points. But let's wait and see on that one. <coughs> It does move Montoya into the points, so they've got both BMW Sambas now into the top 10. And, yeah, I'll be honest, I don't think Montoya was expecting that with the penalty shown in the race so far. Barrichello versus the Williams of Heifel going into the final corner, and that's a position gain for the Renault. And there's Timo Glock now up into 11th place, but having made his only pit stop, so. Once others make their second pit stops of the race, so we could see Glock gaining track position in quite a lot of them. Meanwhile, on the other side of the circuit, on the back straight, is Takuma Sato. That's the gap between himself and Kimi Raikkonen. 
9.4 seconds. So Sato's got second place fairly comfortably at the moment. You never know, the liability could suddenly step in and take anybody out. He's turning into the final clock. Goes Kimi Raikkonen. Now he switched louder versus Alonso for 13th place into turn number 9. So there are still some battles out there on the circuit. And Paul de Rest has made it the order now into 12th place. So that's not too bad an effort for Tony Ross. It looks as if the final points could well be up for grabs with some drivers. Ooh, Bianchi going a lap down on Mark Webber, race leader. So a bit of a, a much quieter race for, for the Williams. Montoya's into the pits for a pit stop. Now, I'm trying to work out if that's his only stop or if this is his second stop. I suspect it could be his only stop of the race. There's your ninth place driver, Adrian Suttle, on the curious three stop strategy. He's catching up to Sebastian Vettel now. But yes, he has made his way into the points, has Suttle, so it's not been not too bad actually for him. And he's around in turn three. This is the battling Louder versus Alonso. Into turn four, Louder trying to push Alonso right to the extreme side and it worked because he maintains that position. 15th place Nick Heidfeld with Rubens Barrichello in front of him. <coughs> and behind, behind the Williams is the Toro Ross. That will be Daniel Ricciardo. And thanks to Montoya's pit stop that has moved... Oh, big, big contact between Lauda and Alonso. More contact and both drivers are off into the kitty litter. So that was, that was a bit ugly, a bit messy and... Yeah, it's harmed Alonso more than it has harmed Louder. So Louder maintaining 12th place, and yeah, it's yellow flags out, so that'll be for Alonso. As Sergio Perez is into the pits for a pit stop, and there's Alonso just waiting on the side to try and rejoin. He's waiting quite a while, so I wonder if he's lost the engine. Nope, he's fine. Off he goes. So that will annoy Alonso a little bit more. And he's dropped down behind Jules Bianchi, now down to 18th place. Now we're just saying that Sergio Perez is making a pit stop from 7th place. That's made Vettel up to 7th, Sutter up to 8th, and the one stopping Glock up to 9th. And De Resta's into the points, so possible that De Resta could be getting a point as Lauda struggles with the brakes. I wonder if he's got damage on his car after the instant that he had. Matt Webber's into the pits for his second pit stop. And that's quite a bit early compared to when he made his first pit stop, so... A bit of a safe strategy, I would say, but in the 20 seconds in the lead, it's not a bad option to go for. Get your final pit stop out of the way, and then just make it to the end of the race for what should be your first win of the season. That's in the 15th place, Montoya has now got the Williams behind him. I think that's Nick Heidfeld. So for the moment, Takuma Sato takes the lead in the race. Kiri Raikkonen up to second at the moment. Mark Webber rejoins in third, still ahead of Nico Hulkenberg. So, yeah, still in the top three, even after making a pit stop. And what is one of the longer pit lanes that we'll go through? There's a battle coming up soon for fourth place between Hulkenberg and Lewis Hamilton. Hulkenberg puts a lap on Felipe Massa. That'll give him a bit of breathing space over the flying Red Bull, who's coming good now in this stage of the race. But he has had to take Massa around the outside of turn five, so that won't help his cause too much. Is Vettel making a pit stop? I think he is. Or has he just lost a place to Adrian Sutter? Yeah, I think he has just lost a place to Adrian Sutter. Not a pit stop, because he is only half a second behind the course in here, but... Suttil doing quite well with his three-stop strategy, so how far is he behind his teammate Albers? 8.2 seconds. Now Suttil will probably be making his final pit stop later than most of these drivers. So it could be that Adrian might be able to jump his own teammates, but we'll wait and see on that one. As Takuma Sato starts a lap, this is his 39th lap. He leads the race at the moment, but he has got his second pit stop to make, as has Kimi Raikkonen. 
10.1 seconds, the gap between Raikkonen and Sato as Albus comes into the pits from 6th place. So that Force India battle for that 6th place could be about to be happening in the next few weeks. Here. When Adrian makes his final pit stop, that's when the battle will take effect. As Hulkenberg with Hamilton right behind him. And the lapped Felipe Massa. He's ready in front of these two at the moment, but having made his final pit stop a bit earlier than I was expecting. And Hulkenberg just 1.2 seconds behind the Toyota. And Webber better be careful that he doesn't get involved in a heavy battle with Hulkenberg, otherwise could be seeing his front wing gone again. Now up to 8th place thanks to Alba's pit stop. So this one stop strategy is starting to come good now for the Ferrari. Did start 5th but on that very heavy fuel load dropped back quite a bit in the first portion of the race. As through turn 3 goes Matthias Lau. Now into turn number 4 goes Matthias Lauda. There is it at the moment. He's in 12th place at the moment behind Christian Albers. So Albers has jumped louder. So Lauder's one stop strategy won't be working as well as Timo Glocks. So in Sato's two stop strategy, it looks like it will net him a podium finish. The last 17 or so laps are complete. And Kimi Raikkonen looks set for third. Soto's into the pits, so that is going to be fine pit stop the race. Yeah, but well, quite a bit earlier than I was expecting, much like Mark Webber's final pit stop. And of course, Adrian Soto on that three stop strategy would have expected him to go a little bit further than that. Let's see where he rejoins in relation to Christian Alves. Keep an eye out on the timing bar at the bottom to see the results of that. That will move Vettel up to sixth as Kimi Raikkonen puts a lap on Rubens Barrichello and to the double right. Timo Glock will move up into 7th and then Sergio Perez moves up into 8th place. Is that Perez? No, it's De Resta. De Resta briefly moves him to 8th, Sergio Perez 9th. Albus 10th, so he has got the jump on Adrian Sutter, but we did see a battle between those two for the final point. And maybe a little bit more than the rest of the drivers make their second pit stops. This is Mark Webber we are looking at, who is in third place at the moment, but net race leader because he has made his final pit stop. I'll just keep an eye on the gap between Hulkenberg and Hamilton as well because they are quite close together. Here's just half a second. Hulkenberg was the last of the two to pit in their first round of pit stops. If Hamilton has to pit first, then that will make his job at jumping Hulkenberg a little bit tricky. We are looking at Hulkenberg's teammates going through the double right. He's got a Williams behind him. It could be Nick Heidfeld. And Rubens Barrichello in 17th place. Renault's race not going very well. Because the bit is out of the race with an engine failure. And Rubens Barrichello is a fair bit down the order. Fernando Alonso, having had that first lap calamity, that second lap calamity rather, and then that, that aggro incident with Matthias Lauder into turn number 9, he's seen go way down the order, in, in 19th place he's actually last of the runners. Alba's in again, he's got an issue. Christian Alba's had to pit for a mechanical reason because he's now dropped way down the order, so no force India battle. Sutil moves up into 10th place, and he's louder up into 11th. That's unfortunate for the Dutch driver. And there is his teammate, Adrian Suttil, who has got Matthias Lauda behind him. It could be a battle between those two for the final point as Sato. Well, let's have a look at the Toro Rosso making a Horlix of turns 7 and 8. It's Paul Duresta, who is in 8th place, I suspect with another pit stop to go. <laughs> He interrupted me about to tell you that Takuma Sato is currently in the pits for his second pit stop. That will move him back down the order quite a bit. But I'd expect him to retake second place once the remaining drivers have got to make their second pit stops. For the moment though, it is Kimi Raikkonen who takes the lead of the race but with a second pit stop to make. And that will move Mark Webber. There he is, going in the background at turn three. 
And now the actual focus of our battle. With the battling Hulkenberg and Hamilton behind. The battle for four, I would expect, when these three final pit stops are done. We look at Fernando Alonso now in the last. I'll repeat that, last place for the Super Gary. It's hard to imagine that a driver of this calibre hasn't scored any points yet. And actually, if you take the whole positions into consideration, Alonso is lost in the championship. So it's been a pretty awful season for Alonso so far, for one reason or another. Incident at Melbourne, then engine failure while he was leaving at Adelaide, and then a transmission failure on the last lap at Suzuki. And now this race. So it's not really worked out at all well for Alonso, and most of it is not his fault. Through the final corner to start another lap, that was Kimi Raikkonen. And now he's switched to Montoya in 13th place with the Williams of Heidfeld behind him. Lauda in 11th place at the moment, and it, it's in fact Bianchi behind Montoya because Heidfeld is showing as in 12th place ahead of Montoya. Now to the first corner, Hulkenberg was started, had started another lap, as had Lewis Hamilton. So, like their first stint, they're going quite deep in their second stint before their final the stops. And I'm just looking a bit further back down the timing. Sato has got Beckel right behind him, so Beckel on the last few row for now is all over the back of the Japanese driver, three time champion, 2005, 2006, and 2007 champions. And the other champion in this series is currently leading the race, but he has got a second pit stop to make and that will drop him behind Sato because Reichman was some 10 seconds behind the Japanese driver before the driver made his final pit stop. And you can see second, third and fourth starting to compress a little bit now. Hulkenberg and Hamilton on that lighter fuel road. Trying to close in on Weber, and that's, this is basically Weber's only nerves of the race. It's the only thing that will stop him from winning is an incident between himself and Hulkenberg and or Hamilton. Joe Bianchi is into the pits for a pit stop in the second of the race, and that will uh, free up Montoya a bit because Bianchi was behind at this stage. So Montoya sitting in 13 points. We'll go another race at that point. Which, what do his move? Raikkonen went through for another lap, as did Hulkenberg and Hamilton. Second, third, and fourth separated by just a second as we have a look at the Toro Rosso Daniel Ricciardo in 15th place. 14th place is Christina Albers. And Joe Bianchi will drop down to 16th, maybe even 17th place behind Rubens Barrichello. And look as if he was inventing the wheel. It's Fernando Alonso going through the first, first few corners. And then turn four. Onto the curb. And who's into the pits? Paul de Resta's into the pits from 8th place. So that's moved Sergio Perez up the place. 8th place for the Mexican driver. He scored points last time out at Suzuki. He scored 10 points and that is basically 5th place for the Mexican driver. And that, that helped move Ferrari ahead of BMW Sauber and the other team here is Toro Rosso. And points for both Ferraris will, will do their points a bit of good. And into the pits for a second pit stop goes Kimi Raikkonen. So we're expecting to rejoin behind Takuma Sato, but what should be a net third place. Let's see, Hamilton's into the pits as well, so that will help Nico Hulkenberg's cause for a fourth place. Well, Hulkenberg was stuck behind Barry Keller at that point. Matt Webber already lacked the resilient, and now Hulkenberg will miss it. So keep an eye on the bottom to see what Takuma Sato take. Place first from Hamilton and then from Kimi Wright. That will move the Japanese driver into his second place. There goes Sato. At the moment, showing in third place, but that is because Nico Hulkenberg has got a second pit stop to make. And, well, Raikkonen and Hamilton have rejoined fifth and sixth behind Sebastian Vettel, so. 
I'd have thought Vettel would have had another pit stop to make because he was sort of nowhere near the back of it. If that is genuine, then goodness me, Vettel could be on for a podium. So going through that's Timo Glock right behind Lewis Hamilton. That was a crucial one for Hamilton actually because Glock on that one stop strategy. And that would still give Hamilton a chance to try and get ahead of Nico Hulkenberg once the German makes his final pit stop. So that was a crucial one for Lewis. Here is Hulkenberg going through the back straight. Is he going to make a pit stop or will keep an eye on his teammate for some reason in 12th place now? And Hulkenberg, I think he was a couple of laps ahead of Hamilton in terms of his pit window. And by the looks of it, he is at least two laps more fueled than Hamilton because Hulkenberg's gone round for another lap. As we look at Christian Alves, now we switch to Will Bianchi in 18th place. Vettel's in the pits, so that fourth place is not entirely genuine, but still no surprise for the Red Bull driver. So that will move Kimi Raikkonen back up into fourth place for the moment, and Lewis Hamilton uh, should retake fifth. And where will this put Vettel? Because he was quite close to Glock and Perez. In fact, it will rejoin behind Glock, maybe even behind Perez. Keep an eye out on that one as Falkenberg and then Reichen going through the turn number three. Perez has jumped Vettel. And where's Vettel in terms of Sutter? Should be ahead, actually. Because Sutter is some 22 seconds behind Perez at this stage. No, he's jumped him. Sutter has jumped Vettel. Interesting. So. Vettel has got some work to do if he's going to regain some of his positions. There is the Adrian driver on that full stop strategy. As off the track pretty much goes Timo Glock. Don't think that's all the tyres, I think that's just pushing hard. But he is now up into sixth place as Glock, so good effort from himself on that one stop strategy. Hulkenberg's into the pits for his final pit stop, and I think the last driver to make a pit stop of this race. Now, let's see where he rejoins in relation to Lewis Hamilton. That is the that is the big target for Hulkenberg. That'll move Sato up into second place, and then it should move Kimi Raikkonen up into third. Now, it's taken a little bit of time for the graphic to update because there goes Sato, and where goes Kimi Raikkonen? Keep an eye on that one, there goes Kimi Raikkonen. Try and get back. Matthias Lauda pulls out of the race. So, a mechanical issue for the Honda driver. And Hulkenberg has stayed ahead of Hamilton. So that's a, that's a potential fourth place for Nico Hulkenberg, which would be a brilliant drive. And it's a loose wheel for Lauda. It's been dri driven well all weekend, has Hulkenberg, with that seventh in qualifying. And on the harder tyres as well. And he had a good chunk of fuel on board as well. Still gained some positions, so whatever upgrades the Hulkenberg and Sauber have done, they've worked wonders. As Heidfeld is into the pits. <clears throat> so that's actually going to move Montoya up into the points, which, well, if two BMW Saubers in the points, that will do their championship a bit of good as well. This is Sebastian Vettel, we were, we were looking at him we switched to Takuma Sato. Now we switched to Montoya, the director was all over the place. <laughs> and just behind is Paul De Resta in 11th. And we'll keep an eye out on the gap between Montoya and De Resta and see if there will be a battle for the final point. This is Kimi Reichman on the back straight. Now it's Daniel Ricciardo in 13th place. 2.7 seconds is the gap between Montoya and De Resta. Keep an eye on that one as the laps tick over. But we look at Kimi Raikkonen and he was about to start another lap. Sergio Perez going into the final corner, now in second place behind his one-stop and teammate. And Perez is some eight seconds behind the German driver. 6 and 7 for Ferrari, that will net them 14 points. Not too bad. Around in the fast lap. It's sticking with Sato, we're looking at. 20 seconds behind race leader Mark Webber. So, despite that early final pit stop, Mark Webber still holds 20 seconds over Sato. And a 
expect Matt Webber to still be holding the fastest lap as well. So through... Well, let's wait a little bit and see Rubens Barrichello 15th place in the red car. And reiterate, not a particularly good race for a Renault team. Running on red wing Pirelli tyres. Going to start on the Bridgestone tyres. One of the few teams to be running the Bridgestone tyres, the other one. That was the Force India. We can look at the Force of the Nick in the 14th place. And for the first couple of corners. And it looks as if Williams will be going pointless for this race. So they have had a decent season so far, with points in the first four races. And this is a quick one, maybe with a bit of a boost. So that's 8th place Adrian Sutter with Sebastian Vettel trying to close the gap between himself and the false Indian driver. And Mark Webber puts a lap on someone, trying to turn into the double right, that is. 7 and 8, and he's going to swing to the right. And then turning hard, put the apex of turn in the nine. And that's where the second sector usually ends, but the timing of the is a little bit different on this version of Sepang, because the second sector point is somewhere here, going into turn 12. And the gap is closing for 10th between Montoya and Resto, it's down to 2.1 seconds. So we are going to see a battle for the final point. So it may be that Toriosa could be punching the points in this race off of the BMW Sarda of Montoya. Sixth in place, Gil Bianchi, and he is on the back straight, I believe that is. There's the support pit exit, and he's going to turn left into one and eight with the left hand American. And Bianchi, sixth in place, some six odd seconds behind Rubens Barrichello in 15th. Now, is there still going to be a battle for fourth place between Hülkenberg and Hamilton? Well, the gap is 1.5 seconds between those two. So keep an eye on that one and see if there will be a battle between those two. As Weber struggles a bit with the turning, so he's still driving quite hard. He's wanting to try and, try and maintain his fastest lap, I suppose. But looking at the timing at the bottom, it looks as if Sato is catching up to him. It's now 18 and a half seconds. Could be traffic, but could be rather just backing up a bit. <coughs> well, it is still 1.4 seconds, the gap between Hulkenberg and Hamilton. Playing through turn 4, and now through turns 7 and 8 goes to Kim Sato. And he is edging out the gap between himself and Kim Raikkonen, 5.6 seconds. So what will this do for the championship actually? I think Weber will be taking the lead of the Drivers' Championship by a single point from Jensen Button. And then I think Kimi Raikkonen with his third place, 15 points, will keep him in the hunt. Will be just six points behind Mark Weber. But what about Takuma Sato? Well, let's just double check that. Currently sits on 23 points, so uh, second place 18 points will give him 41 points. So uh, that should theoretically keep him in fourth place in the championship. Adrian Sutton, third in the championship at the moment on 27 points. Currently eighth in the race on just the really four points, so uh, that'll move him, that'll slip him a little bit behind the top four. As Alonso chases Jordan Ackerman, a lowly 16th place. 15 places further up is that driver there, Mark Webber. And Hulkenberg has... Well, it's still 1.3, 1.4 seconds over Lewis Hamilton, but it's pretty set between those two now. So, not sure if there'll be a battle for fourth place, but it could still be a battle for tenth. Yep, just 1.3 seconds now, De Resta has caught up to Montoya, so keep an eye out on that one, we may see it at some point. Meanwhile, Subtle versus Vettel, 3.2 seconds has to get, now up to 3.5, I wonder if Vettel made a small error in the first four corners. 
as he goes into the double right of 7 and 8. As out of 14 goes Kimi Raikkonen. Somewhere in the distance is Takuma Sato, second place. About 6 seconds in front. 5.6 actually, so closer to 5.5 than it is to 6. And then 7.1 seconds behind Kimi Raikkonen. In fourth place, not far ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Now, the rest has made a mistake somewhere, and there's Glock making a mistake. Maybe his tyres are starting to go off a little bit, but he's got a fairly healthy lead over his teammate Sergio Perez. Just coming into shot there, it was 8.7 seconds as they went through the second sector point. And Glock lost 1.1 seconds. Thanks to that lockup alone. All the rest are in 11. Still, still trying to catch up to Montoya. He's not given up on that final point. The rest are wanting that final point to get his first points of his of his career. Actually, this is his first season in in the GP4 Manager Series. Montoya wants a point just to give him a bit of a morale boost because he's not had a great season so far. Just a seventh place to his name, and that came. Attrition laden. That was round two. Now we're on round four. And then the next couple of races, I think we, we will head to Europe. Start the European leg. And interestingly enough, the first race of the European leg is in Germany as we revisit Hockenheim. Not the modern layout, but we will be, we will be going to the old school forest layout. I am looking forward to that, because that could be my favourite circuit. In just seeing sh shots of cars going into that first Jim Clark chicane, with trees on the outside, trees on the inside, it's, it just looks pretty. And in GP4 you do tend to get some pretty good races. Let's see Alonso. He's overtaken Bianchi and he's trying to defend it a bit. That is the 16th place. And we move up to 5th place, Lewis Hamilton still trying to chase Nico Hülkenberg, but a bit, a bit tricky for him to do so because he has got slightly older tyres than Hülkenberg, at least 2 laps. And Hülkenberg still doing a great job in 4th place. As that's Daniel Ricciardo, who's way down the order. He's got Mark Webber. Mark Webber somewhere behind him. There he is. And he's about to start three laps to go. Julien turning right. Whereabouts is he on the circuit? Is that going on to the back straight? I think it is. Yep, you can see shadows being omitted by the sunshine against the uh, big, big grandstand on the left of the circuit. For the final half, he goes Bianchi. And about to start. Well, it will be his three laps to go, but since he's on lap 53 for Bianchi. Because he is a lap down on Martin Webber. He turns into turn number five now. And the gap between himself and Sato 18.7 seconds, so Webber's starting to pull away a bit from the Japanese driver. And Kimi Raikkonen is still holding in third place. 5.4 seconds behind the set. And the battle for fourth place, well, it's still 1.5. Ooh, whether that's Heidfeld going off the circuit at the double right and curiously spinning. He had a, must have had a tank slapper as he rejoined the circuit and then overcorrected it somehow. So that was a comical one there for Heidfeld. And he looks as if he'll be going pointless in this race. It's still 1.1 seconds to get between Montoya and the rest of. So the rest is starting to run out of time now. And there's still got a chance of claiming that final point. Into the final corner, there are the Malaysians watching. Matt Webber starts his penultimate lap. And there's 11th place to Resto. There in front of him is Montoya. The gap is just a second now. And Paul De Resto will be starting to feel the effects of the slipstream being emitted by the BMW Sauber in front of him. Montoya using that one-stop strategy like Timo Glock. In the moment, it's put him into the point, but he is under threat. <coughs> that 
that was the battle for fourth we were looking at between Hulkenberg and Hamilton. It is 1.2 seconds, the gap between those two, but I think Hulkenberg might have that one safe, unless he makes a catastrophic mistake at some point. But they've all been fairly well behaved, aside from Alonso and Lauda, and what happened on the second lap. And in a few spins at the double right, but generally speaking, the driving stand has been quite good. Drives very aware of each other and the space that they're providing for each other, so it's been a decent race. A fairly dominant one for Mark Webber, once he took the lead from Kim Vikram at the start, he just pulled away and never looked back. At this moment, Sato, 19 seconds behind, and Kim Vikram has now got the gap to less than five seconds between the seconds between the Sato, but with just one and a half laps to go, or one and a third lap to go for these two, uh, it looks like it's two and a half to the Kimi, but Still useful points and another podium finish for the McLaren driver who did this championship quite a bit of good. And McLaren have yet to use any of their tokens for this season as well. So McLaren looking in quite good shape, even if Kobayashi's engine suggested otherwise. Matt Webber's on to his final lap now. 56 out of 56 and he's a decent lap on that one because there's now more than 20 seconds and here comes the Kimisata who turns into the first corner. It's exactly 20 seconds, 20.000. Raikkonen is some 4.2 seconds behind Kimisata. And the Sato has made either a bit of a mistake or he's stuck in track. And now uh, it is Hulkenberg versus Hamilton. That's pretty much settled now. Hulkenberg's pretty safe there. Got six pair of seven, so both Ferraris in the top seven. Sutil eight, so he's made that pretty spot strategy work somehow. Vettel at ninth. Can't seem to do anything about Sutil. But there is still a battle for tenth. Montoya was just six tenths of a second ahead of a Paul de Resta. As we are searching for Mark Webber. He should be turning into the final corner. There he is at the final corner. And redemption for what happened in Melbourne. Redemption for what happened at Suzuka. Taking his first win of the season is Mark Webber for Toyota. And that will move him into the championship lead by a single point over his teammate Jensen Button. So both Toyotas will be one and two in the championship. And that will strengthen their constructors' bid as well. Let's see the rest of the drivers come through. Alonso behind the Williams. There's Sato in second and third place. Behind the lap, Gio Bianchi. There he is, Kimi Raikkonen. And in fourth place, brilliant drive from Luka Hulkenberg. Brilliant drive in all weekends. That's his first point of the season. There's Hamilton taking the fifth. And there's Massa after a pretty dreadful race. There's so a few behind his teammate. And Timo Glock. In sixth, there he goes, and then seventh should be Sergio Perez, but Adrian Sutil's not too far behind, so Perez hanging on to that seventh. And let's see further back. There's Vettel in ninth, and now let's see the battle for tenth between Montoya and DiResta. There it is. I think Montoya's just about safe. DiResta not close enough going into the final corner. It'll have to be an absolute stupid move, a move of stupidity on him, but. He's sensible, but he's close, but not close enough. Montoya takes one point for himself and an additional point for BMW Sauber. There goes the rest of, and there goes Christian Albers, who probably would have been in the points, but had to make an unscheduled pit stop shortly after his second stop. And there's Daniel Ricciardo, who had a difficult race thanks to probably lap two damage. And he's the last of the runners on the lead lap. So that was the Malaysian Grand Prix, and there is a look at the results. Once again, 19.946 seconds was the winning margin between Weber and Sato. Now we move over to the European leg of the season, as we go to Hockenheim for the German Grand Prix. We'll see you then. <laughs> 